Hello and welcome to Talk Back Live, CNN's interactive talk show. I'm Roger Cossack, in today for Bobby Batista. Well, it's been nearly an hour now since John Glenn rocketed into space for the second time, more than three decades since his first space odyssey. How has the space program changed over the years? Is the preparation process different for astronauts now? Are we more interested in space? Let's ask CNN correspondent Miles O'Brien, who is hosting our space coverage. Miles, how did the liftoff go? It looked perfect over here. I don't think you could have scripted anything better than this one, Roger. It was really amazing. The weather was fantastic. The, uh, there were a few problems with aircraft located in the general area of the Kennedy Space Center. But other than that, uh, there was one minor uh, indication of a valve leak, which turned out to be not much of anything. That's about as close to a flawless launch of a vehicle with two million distinct parts as you could possibly imagine. It's truly a spectacular sight, and uh, no matter what you may say about the validity of the space program, the manned space program, the validity of John Glenn going in space, you can't help but be taken away and a bit awestruck by it all. Miles, I will admit right now that I'm not very objective about this. I am very excited and thrilled uh, to see this happen. Uh, tell me some of your feelings. Uh, you've been there all day. You've been uh, intimately involved with all this. Uh, how did you feel when you saw this happen? Uh, it's, uh, it was such a thrill uh, to, to be able to watch it and to be able to sit beside Walter Cronkite, uh, the person who I first became accustomed and, and uh, got to know the space program through, uh, watching him in the, the mid-60s to the Gemini and Apollo programs. Uh, it was a, a thrill on many accounts uh, for me. And um, I, you know, I, I, we as journalists tend to focus on the issue of whether it was a stunt or whether it was about science. It's at these moments when uh, I think everybody's a sort of a cheerleader for the success, at least of the flight. All right, let's have some comments from our audience. Sam from uh, Georgia, what do you have to say? Well, one of the things that, that I liked about this one was I, it took me back to uh, when he first went up in space. And I remember the, uh, the race between the United States and the Russians and, and the, the national pride that we took in that. And it kind of brings that back. It's not as it's it's gotten ho hum in the in the last several years because it's so r routine. But boy, back then it was not routine. Miles, uh, you're way too young uh, to remember that space race uh, at that time. But I must tell you that I I do remember it. And and Sam brings up a good point. This does fill us with national pride, and it does sort of turn our head once again to uh, to the space uh, to the to the space program. Well, there's you know, Roger. The bottom line is NASA is a victim of its own success. Uh, they've done a very good job over the years. There have been some notable exceptions, of course, but they've done a very good job at making spaceflight, which is a pretty extraordinary thing, look routine. We don't go and cover uh, airplanes taking off at uh, the average metropolitan airport because that's routine. And the same has really gone for many of the 91 space shuttle missions, now 92 in orbit. The fact remains that it's not a great story because NASA is so good at it. It's a routine scientific mission at many times, and in a way, NASA would like us to pay more attention to it, but they've done their best to make it not that exciting a story. <laughs> How do you like that? NASA's a victim of their own success. <laughs> Miles, stay right there. We're going to go to NASA at Houston to go to CNN's Tony Clark. Tony, how's it going in Houston at the NASA Space Center? Well, you know, Roger, I was watching the uh, mission control. I was in a berth just above mission control here at Johnson Space Center when the launch took off. And there are about seven or eight monitors in there, and no one was looking at the monitors that were showing the launch itself. Everyone was glued to their computer screen, watching the numbers come in, making sure that everything was going just as expected. Because, you know, I think it's about 30 seconds after liftoff, control switches from Florida here to the Johnson Space Center, and they will keep control here throughout the uh, the flight of discovery all right Tony when you say they keep control what exactly and I suppose without being too technical what exactly do they do and how do they do it well you know miles mentioned how many parts there are to the shuttle and and there are so many functions that have to be monitored the uh, astronauts on the shuttle simply can't keep up with everything and so what mission control is able to do is monitor the activities that need to be done on the shuttle monitor the health of the shuttle and also monitor the astronauts themselves one of the interesting things is that uh, the capcom the capsule communicator in this case uh, susan still is a former astronaut and uh, she is a uh, an astronaut and she is the communicator between mission control and the shuttle and the shuttle and mission control and so she brings the astronauts perspective to the uh, the operation of the uh, the shuttle through mission control tony you've been inside that uh, nasa space center and where they're controlling it describe it for us what does it look like in there does it look like outer space itself 
Well, no, the, uh, the uh, Mission Control itself is really relatively new. This particular one, it was only uh, started operation three years ago, and one of the things that they uh, do in there is they, they have put in kind of off-the-shelf computers. Uh, before, in the early days of the space mission, they used a large mainframe computer, and it was very difficult if one screen went down to uh, replace it. And now they use a variety of uh, off-the-shelf types of computers that are networked uh, throughout NASA. And uh, what you're seeing right now is the flight director. She's in the light jacket. Uh, that is Linda Hamm, and then the uh, Capcom right next to her. They are the ones that are overseeing this flight. And, Tony, I... I they are in com they are in constant contact with the satellite at all times with uh, with the uh, astronauts there are some times that are uh, they're described as uh, referred to as LOS as losses of signal and so there are times that there is no communication uh, but those times uh, are, are very rare and they are always able though to monitor the systems on the uh, the shuttle all right joining us now a, a real American space hero Buzz Aldrin Buzz what's going through those astronauts minds right now what are they doing I think they're getting ready uh, to uh, see their first return uh, visit over the across the United States, and I hope they get a very good view. If you remember on uh, John Glenn's first flight, uh, he didn't have very good a view outside the spacecraft. He had to look through a periscope, so I'm sure that, uh, that he in particular is relishing the experience of zero gravity, uh, maybe tossing a glove around and watching it uh, float in front of him but uh, I bet he can't wait to get to those windows to look outside. Our first fax from Paul from Ohio says, in 1962, my mom and I watched as John Glenn rocketed into space. Mom had butterflies in the pit of her stomach as the first man was launched into space. Today we witness history again. Godspeed, John Glenn. Well, Buzz, uh, what will they actually be able to see uh, out there? Uh, you said that the first time uh, uh, John Glenn had to use a periscope, what, what kind of view will the astronauts be able to see? Well, they'll put the spacecraft in a position where uh, I'm sure they'll be able to look down on the Earth. Um, uh, a little bit different from the early flights where we had tracking stations at different locations around the Earth where they would have acquisition of signal, signal and uh, then for a period of six or seven minutes, they'd be in, in contact with that ground station. Then they'd lose contact again. So we position stations, tracking stations around the Earth to maximize the amount uh, for critical time periods, but now we have satellites up there that are tracking, they're called tracking data relay satellites, and they send the information from the spacecraft uh, back down to uh, the Mission Control Center in Houston. All right, Cliff, you have a question for Buzz Aldrin. Go ahead. Yeah, Buzz, I want to know if you'd like to go back to space. Huh. I think everybody that's uh, been in space at one time would like to get back there at some time. Um, I think John is very unique case in his position because uh, his, his uh, astronaut career was cut a little bit short because he was the first American to orbit the Earth and I think he was a very valuable commodity and we wanted to take very good care of that so I think the president rightly so decided uh, not to uh, put him at risk by having him uh, fly again in a Mercury program so he went into industry and then he uh, got involved in, in a very successful political career so now he's come back again uh, to, to give it another try, and I think he's a very well-deserved uh, opportunity, and uh, we've all been cheering him on. But I think he's a very unique case. I certainly don't expect uh, other early pioneer astronauts to be clamoring, looking for a flight. Miles, uh, now that the, 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 the rocket has taken off, uh, what's going on where you are now? Is there sort of a letdown? Uh, what's happening? Well, I guess you could call it a letdown. The, uh, the action really does shift very quickly over to Houston, and uh, that's really uh, the only vantage place on Earth to get a uh, vantage point to really get a good uh, look at what's going on with the orbiter. The best place to be would be up there. I'm sure Buzz would concur with that one. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure there is a little bit of that, but I'm sure there's also a great sense of uh, gratification every time they launch one of these rockets, and they launch it successfully, right, Buzz? Well, of course, yes. We have another successful launch under our belt. We're beginning to build up more and more confidence in this wonderful machine that was put together by people from all over the country, and it's it's really a technical marvel. Uh, Buzz, uh, there, there's been some criticism, at least, uh, about John Glenn going up, saying that uh, perhaps someone else should have gone. How, how do you weigh in on that? I can't think of a more ideal person. Uh, I've known John 
45 years now. Uh, I was a second lieutenant, and uh, he and I uh, were in combat together in Korea in 1953. He shot down three MiGs, and I shot down two of them. But, you know, I wasn't quite as experienced as he was.